Welcome to today's very special edition of Behind the Scenes. And what I like about Behind the Scenes is it kind of takes us back before the things you're going to see on the screen. And we're here today with some very special guests, Kevin and Sam Sorbo. Welcome, guys. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and we're here to talk about a new film that's going to open this Friday, October 27th, mm -hmm. called Let There Be Light. We are. You directed this film. I did. Tell us a little bit about it. I think Sam should give you the sort of the background of how the whole thing even happened before I tell you how I got okay. stuck with the directing role. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this idea of, uh, you know, I don't see a lot of stuff coming out of Hollywood that I'm interested in. I, I try to find a new TV show and it's everything is about violence or sex. Like it just, and, and so it's not interesting to me. And I was thinking one day, what would it look like if the world's greatest atheist had something happen to him that challenged his worldview, that, that sort of rocked his world? And uh, I sort of developed that idea for a little bit, and then I called a friend of mine who's a very well-known Hollywood screenwriter named Dan Gordon and asked him if he'd write it with me, and of course he said no, because he's a very well-known <laughs> Hollywood screenwriter. And uh, he said, but we haven't seen each other for a while, let's have lunch. And so at the end of lunch, he asked me about, about the idea, and when I told him, he couldn't resist it, because it's the... It's, it's the human condition. It's, it's wrestling with the big questions of life and grief and, and all of that. And so he jumped on board immediately. And then within two weeks, out of the blue, I kid you not, Sean Hannity called Kevin and said, I want to produce a faith-based movie with you. Do you have anything? <laughs> and so the three of us, Dan and yeah. Kevin and I, flew to New York and pitched Sean for a half hour. And may I add, um, during the pitch, Dan Gordon did the pitch. He was awesome. <laughs> Sean didn't interrupt once, which was shocking to oh me. Because <laughs> he always jumps on things, right? But he sat there and listened and absolutely loved it. And he wrote a check right there and then. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. he just he jumped right in. So I think the story itself is kind of irresistible to people. Okay, so Dan Gordon, talk a little bit about Dan because he is a really well-known guy. He did Hurricane. He was nominated for the original screenplay with Denzel Washington movie in the D Hurricane. He wrote uh, White Earp. Nominated for an Oscar, right? He was nominated for Oscar for, for um, Hurricane. Hurricane. Yes. And then um, uh, White Earp, one of my favorite movies, with Kevin Costner, and he was the uh, showrunner on Highway to Heaven. Highway to Heaven with, with Michael, uh, Landon Michael Landon for many yeah. years. Yeah. So very good writer uh, and just somebody we've met through the years and all stayed in touch with and ever since. Well, I cheated a little bit because uh, when I saw you guys on the Huckabee show, of right. course I'm watching, everyone's watching Huckabee, I hope, on Saturday and Sunday nights. But um, I had a friend of mine who knows Dan called him and said, how was it to work with the Sorbos? Uh-oh. <laughs> he said it was a great experience. Yeah. And just like you said, it was yeah. irresistible when he heard your, your idea yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to bring that to life. And so it's really important. I think, here's the thing. A lot of people, will, will, when they hear some, somebody's made a Christian movie, mm -hmm. it's kind of, oh, another Christian movie. But you've got an Academy Award nominated writer You've got some actors here that are pretty well known. Tell us about the rest of your cast. There's some other folks here on this. In this well, uh, Dionne Warwick is actually in the movie as well. She sings the title song. We've got Travis Tritz in there, plays yeah. a doctor on the show as well. Daniel Roebuck, people will definitely recognize him. He was on Matlock for many years, but he's also wow. he's a face that's been on so many different movies yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it, it was, the way everything came together was really amazing because most movies from an idea to get a green light, to, to actually make it to the screen can be anywhere between three to five years. This was about a 16 month It's adventure. actually nine so, years. Is it yeah. nine? Is the years? average from concept to screen. Yeah. Well, then we beat that by quite a bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> shattered it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, listen, congratulations, first of all, for getting a movie made. I, I always think it's a miracle to get a movie made. Oh, no to question. get a really good movie made, yeah. it's nearly impossible. Yeah. And so, you directed this one. I did. Okay, talk, tell well, us. You know what? I started directing back in my Hercules years. So yeah. when, was, when this was all said and done, we're financed, it was Dan who said, you're going to direct this. And I went, I am? And they, I said, okay. And then he said, Sam, you're going to... so cheap. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, then she said, Sam, you're going to play the, 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 the female lead. And yeah. she says, I didn't write it that way. Yeah. But, you know, you came in. He want, Dan really yeah. wanted this yeah. to be a family... Okay. And we worked together before as well. So. Yeah. And, um, and actually, it worked out really well. And our and then, boys are in it also. Dan was insistent that the boys play the parts. And I said, I gave him a little pushback because mm -hmm. they're going to be scrutinized as being the, the sons yeah. of the, you know what I mean? And so I wanted to make sure that they could hold their own, which they did they remarkably. Did. They did I mean, job. they really did a yeah. great job. People love, people love them in the movie. And well, then Michael Francisi, we got Michael Francisi oh, wow. who is in the well. movie, 
playing yeah. himself. Basically, he's playing a character Dan named Pastor Vinny. Dan wrote that character in there for him. For him, yeah. yeah. And, and he did a great job. Beautiful. And then Sean Hannity is in the movie, and he plays... Um, uh, Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity. <laughs> no. <laughs> That'd be hard for he's him to so play something else. He's so Yeah. <laughs> he goes, yeah. He, goes, he came in, he said, I don't memorize anything, guys, so I don't know. What, what do you want me to say here? I, I'm no good at that. I got to read off the teleprompter, but he did a, he did a wonderful no, job as well. No, he did a great job. Yeah. That's like seeing T.D. Jakes in a movie. Who is he? Yeah. Oh, it's T.D. Jakes. Well, the scene with him ended up sort of being an, almost an improv in a way. We knew what the, the scene yeah. was going to be about, but we had to sort of really listen to him like you're supposed yeah. to do an acting yeah. anyway. So yeah. we just let Sean just do his thing. Guys, let's roll the trailer to the film so we give people a little bit of an idea what we're Great. talking about. Let's okay. roll. Perfect. Oh. Yeah, 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 I'm coming. You're drunk? Oh, you can't pull the wool over your eyes. The basic tenet of Christianity. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you dare tell me about the love and the compassion of your so-called God. What do you think it does to the boys to take the death of their brother and use it as part of your carnival act. Pays the bills. Daddy. Clinically dead in the ambulance for four minutes. It's a miracle. I saw Davy. Now, all I wanted to do was just, I wanted to put my arms around him. I, I don't know what to do with it. You've gotten the best scientific explanation. It hasn't brought you any comfort. Would you consider consulting a different source? Aki is your God, and he's holding out his hand to you. All you got to do now is take it. Jesus gets whacked, right? Well, I've never exactly heard it put that way, but yeah. Follow me here. This ain't brain surgery. Do you believe that God hears? God always answers prayers. Sometimes we just don't understand the answers. This better be good. That's what I said. So my first question is, are you guys ready for the amount of heat that'll be coming your way with this? Wow. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Sean Hannity mm -hmm. called out of the blue. Yeah. Okay. And tell me a little bit, what's your history with Sean that that would happen? Well, you know, I've been on the show a number of times. I've been on, uh, I've been on Fox, a lot of the shows, from, from Outnumbered to, to Fox and Friends or whatever, because it's actually one of the few outlets that will have you come on and talk about a Christian movie, which is amazing to me. When, when you look at a movie like God's Not Dead, did the numbers it did. So we followed up by the third week, went out to these other the network shows, the morning shows, and said, look what this movie's done. And they were like, nope, not interested. Yeah. Which is very frustrating, and it's amazing to me that they have such a, 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 such a push against it. When this is really a movie, we talked earlier about, oh, another Christian movie. I don't know. Well, how about another movie about, you know, guys just getting killed left and right? But Halloween keeps putting that out there. <laughs> no, I know. You know, and, and in this one, yeah, I play, I, did a, I played an atheist college professor in, in God's Not Dead. In this movie, I play one of the world's most famous atheists. I'm like a Dawkins or a Hitchens. And somebody's asked me, so you're playing another atheist? They go, yeah, there's only two of them in the world, apparently. You know, <laughs> but, you know, Clint Eastwood can do seven Westerns playing the same character, <laughs> but I can't do two atheists. Yeah. The whole idea is, you know, it's not necessarily we want to preach to the choir. We also want to reach, I, I, we want to reach across the aisle. I want, I want agnostics and atheists to go to this movie. I want them to look at it and have, a, have something, I mean, hopefully you get a nugget out of that that makes them think. Because I've had atheists come up to me and say, you know what, I've seen your faith-based movies. I don't agree with what you guys do. Do, but I thought the movie was kind of good. And to hear that from somebody yeah. who doesn't have a belief, even though atheism is a belief, it's a faith as well, right? Um, it's, to me, it's, 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 it's breaking down those walls slowly. Yes. Because you know what? Somebody made these chairs. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you can't get something from nothing. Yeah. And that's my biggest argument. You know, years back in 1999, Matt and Lori, the, uh, of course, the heads of TBN now, they made a little film called The Omega Code. I don't know if you guys went and saw that film, but I got a call from Matt, and um, he, he was working independently of TBN at the time, just making movies, an independent film producer with Generation Entertainment, mm -hmm. and he called me, he goes, hey, um, I've made a movie, I've just mortgaged my house yeah. for the last bit of money for the P&A, 
and I know you've got a lot of folks who work with you that are talking to pastors every day. Can you, can you help me? And I just said, wait a minute, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? He said, I, I mortgaged my house and I put everything on the line yeah. because it's important enough for me to let people know about Jesus. And I want to take it into movie theaters, which is a place where people communicate on a different level. And we want to open this up to the world. That's what we're all about. That's what yeah. we're doing. That's the chairman of this network now. And so what you guys did, I don't know how much you had to put at risk. It sounds like not a whole lot because Sean jumped right in the boat right away, and that's all. Well, there's still fun. a risk here. This movie's got to do, <laughs> got to do well. No, you know what? You know what? Jesus spoke in parables, because yeah. storytelling moves people, and that's the way to influence the culture. And what are we seeing right now coming out of Hollywood, influencing the culture? Are are movies that uphold women as as sexual objects? And yet we're surprised that Harvey Weinstein treats women as if they were sexual objects. It's, you know, there's a, there's a weird sort of hypocrisy there. And so we just, uh, you know, I thought about this movie and if you want to influence the culture, you tell stories. And this movie tells a story. It's just got a different worldview than what most, what most of the films that come out of Hollywood have. Sure. And so when you look at Noah or Exodus, right? Atheist directors, they put their worldview into that story. Sure. Uh, even though they really like hands off, that's the Bible. Leave that alone, right? But they didn't. They didn't seem to have a problem with that. And I'm just. I just think that if we want it, if we want to affect the culture, we tell good stories. The story of Jesus Christ, his story, is a story of hope. It's a story of forgiveness, right? Yeah. And that's uplifting to an audience. And so that's the story that we're trying to tell: is a story of hope and, and forgiveness, mm -hmm. a story of family and fatherhood, um, something that will really affect people and, and hopefully. Give them some food for thought. Give them some some hope to go home with. And you and I talked about that off stage earlier about the the fatherless issue that's happening, certainly yeah. in minority groups. Yes. Where at this stage right now we're at about eighty percent within our inner cities of kids being raised without a father. This movie deals with that as well because my character, uh, we've been divorced for eight years in that movie, and the what happens to me? There's an event that happens to me where I have a vision that changes my entire worldview. And the only person who understands me is my ex-wife. And I have, I've been a horrible ex-husband, but I've been a worse father to my two kids. Yeah. And this is a movie that deals not only with that fatherhood issue, but mm -hmm. deals with the father issue up above as well. Because I, I, I you think know, it's reflection, right? Yeah. If we can't deal, if, if we don't feel like we have a father in heaven, then how are we going to relate to a father on earth or vice versa, right? It's, well, this, a, this movie to me is ultimately a love story. And if you look at what's going on in the world right now, you look at the Fergusons, you look at the Baltimores, you look at Chicago and all the stuff going on out there. I've always said, do you think those mostly under 30 year old men, do you think if they had any biblical principles in their life, if they had any God view in their lives, would they be out doing yeah. the anger, the hate, the damage they're doing to private and public property out there? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so much noise in our world right now. Yeah. Mm. So many things clamor for our attentions. You know, I. I saw last week that the uh, Boy Scouts opened up the Cub Scout era to girls now being able to become part of the Cub Scouts. So I'm looking at it and go, oh my gosh. But then I talked to the guys at the Scouts and they were talking to me about, well, it's because parents are so busy, they don't really have time to run their kids to two different events and most parents are having kids within five years of each other. So, so much noise clamoring for your attention. Yeah. How do we break folks out of that noise to come see this movie and why should they? help me to understand because we, we've got to really speak to their hearts to get them off couches. Because I guys. think there's a lot of darkness out there, right? And the title of the movie is Let to Be Light. Somebody said it in the Bible, I think it was God. But, it's, <laughs> it's like, but it, to me, it's, it's, it is a message of hope, of, of family, of love, of redemption and forgiveness. And I think a lot of people out there looking for something. And we're, I think a lot of this anger comes from people that are unhappy with their lives. I think these college students that are rioting and they don't, you know, freedom of speech is under attack and all that. I think there's more to it than just those issues. I think there's yes. a lot of unsatisfaction in people's lives. This is a movie, I look, I love going to a great visual effect movie. But you walk out, you don't really care about anybody. You don't care. There's no character development. There's, there's no You change. walk out and saw amazing visual effects. But yeah. When I sit there and watch movies like these Avengers and stuff, they just knocked down 47 buildings in New York City. That means like 100,000 people just died at least. Yeah. But they don't talk about that. Yeah. And you walk out and you go, wow, that was a great ride. But you don't walk out thinking about something. You and know, something like this is a movie that will make people talk and make people think. I think that we have the tendency to sweep pain and discomfort and things under the rug as quickly and as fast as we can. 
people don't really like to talk about eternity, where you're going to spend eternity, mm -hmm. and what that's all about. And every once in a while, a film like this will come along, yeah. and people have to think about more than just living for the now. Yeah. So I think it's really critical that we really engage in that discussion. You know, you've been part of one of the biggest faith release movies of all time, of course, mm -hmm. God's Not Dead. Yeah. And you said something on Huckabee the other night that caught my attention. You said, you know, people used to just recognize me for Hercules. Yeah. And by the way, my boys are at home. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're, they're grown now, but yeah. we remember. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but now <laughs> you're being recognized for God's Not Dead. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get folks to start recognizing you for Let There Be Light, because I think, I think a light does need to keep shining. That's what TBN is all about, bringing right. light into dark places. We've got a, a world that's not ever increasing in light, but we need to do something more about that. Let's roll one another clip for him. This sure. one's called Soul and Katie Fighting. Soul and Katie Fighting. Let's see it. Hey, oh, you came to the door. I feel so honored. Hi, Katie. Are the boys ready? Boys! Oh, and uh, I can't keep them all day. I've got a book launch party tonight. Another God bashing party? How nice for you. Um, I heard about the debate last night, and uh, you caused quite a sensation. Ah, it's not much, but uh, pays the alimony. So, um. Oh, what's the use? Never mind. <laughs> no, no. You want to say something? Go ahead. I don't need your permission to speak, so. Do we really need to do this one? I just get the boys and be on my way. You know, I do want to talk to you about the kind of support you're giving our children. <laughs> so that's what this is about. You want to get the court to increase the payments. Well, you know what? Your lawyer knows where to find mine. I'm not talking about financial support, Saul. Oh, well, what a novelty. Thank heaven for small blessing. What do you think it does to the boys to know that their father is saying that their brother's life had no meaning, that there's no hope that he's in heaven? I don't believe in that fairy tale. But they do. Not my fault. I'm not the one who brainwashed them. Saul, how can you take something as intensely private as the death of their brother and use it as part of your carnival act? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This carnival act, it, it pays the bills around here. Well, who pays the emotional bills? What? You don't think there's a day or a night or an hour that goes by that I don't think about our son? My guess is that every time you do, you get so high, there's not an actual feeling or thought at all. You know, this conversation is not only pointless, it's painful. Well, that's the first honest thing you've said. Then why don't we end it? You did. Remember? Wow. Um, that didn't look like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> How was it for you guys to act together in a film? I know you did Hercules. You were a princess. Yes, I played a princess. Yeah. So we came down to guest star on the show, and um, I. It was good working together. We yeah. we work very well together. Sure. I, we just do, and we're I guess we're blessed that way. And um, um, typically, I'm right. Yes. So that helps, <laughs> right? It makes for an easier marriage. Uh -huh. but, you know, I I want to say this this movie talks about relationship forgiveness. Uh, uh, and, and the fact is, it tests really well for women because it's a drama and women like drama, dramatic films. But it tests even better for men. Wow. And I think the reason is because they feel represented. Like when you see Saul say, it pays the bills. Yeah. You know, that's sort of, the, men have in our society now have been relegated to this, you know, bill payer kind of thing. And fatherhood has been diminished. And I think that uh, if we if we want to return to to values and family values, we have to raise up the the dads. And well, we you see it on sitcoms. The dads always fat oh, and a loser, and the kids it? make fun of mom's the hot one. And she, I mean, it's it's amazing. They all have that same sort of formula where the dad's an idiot. Yeah. And so after decades of doing that, yeah, this is what we've done. Sam, why is opening weekend important? Oh my gosh, for, especially for an independent movie. I mean, we're, it's an independent movie in, in as much as it was funded independently, but it's still dependent on people showing up at the theaters. And if they don't come opening weekend, then it won't stay. It okay. just, if they I mean, show up opening weekend, then we can hope to, to broaden our reach and go into new theaters in other cities. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to go, uh, you can go to lettherebelightmovie.com mm -hmm. and find out the, the theater that's closest to you. And if there isn't one, Go talk to your, your local church leaders and see if you can organize group sales and open a theater in your town. That's, that's not that difficult to do, but theaters need to know that there's an interest for people to see the film. So call the theaters, 
and tell them that you want to go Great. see the film. But that's what happened with God's Not Dead. People went to the theaters and said, look, we'll fill this place up opening weekend. And so the theaters, it's show business, right? It's a business. The theaters said, fine, we'll put it in there. We know nothing about it, but we'll put it in there. And they filled it up and, and it just exploded on its own. It went from 700 screens to 2,000 screens by the third week. Right. That's unheard of. Right. Unbelievable. And I will say that as, as much as women love this movie and men love it more, if you want to, if, ladies, if you want to go and invite uh, the man in your life, whether it's your, your husband, your son, your, your mm. father, to uh, a movie and have him thank you for it afterwards, this is that movie. Because, you know, people are afraid to invite people to church anymore. Because there's like this stigma that's attached now. But they're not afraid to invite people to the movies because the movie's just a story. And there's popcorn. And there's so, popcorn. So <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's a whole different way to get people to get in there. We and, encourage and, people, yeah. yeah, because yeah. this movie addresses those, those, cru those crucial issues in a, in a really entertaining mm -hmm. and uplifting way. Yeah. Okay, TVN family, here we go. Let there be light movie.com. This film opens this Friday. Sam just explained about why opening weekend is so crucial. Matt and I have talked about this many times. We usually think that we can move the needle by at least 100,000 people going into that movie theater. Now, when Kevin and I were backstage talking, he let me know that it's in less than 500 screens. But you'll be able to go to that website, lettherebelightmovie.com, and find where it's playing close to you. And if it's not close to you, and after this weekend, you see that this thing is taken off, call your local theater, let them know that you want them to bring that movie in because you want to see it. I'm telling you, it doesn't take many phone calls to open up those theaters. So TBN family, let's join in and bring a little bit of light in darkness. Invite friends to this movie, let there be light movie.com this weekend. That's going to be opening. We, let's do all we can to support that and show our world that these movies are in demand and we want more of them. And hopefully someday soon we'll have this film on TBN. All right, let's go one more clip. Can we just do one sure, more and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. Here we go. I can't sleep. You know, I, I, I can't think. I can't, I can't, I can't not think. I, I, I can't stop thinking about Davey, you know, and how he looked and how it felt and what he said. Wait, what? What did he say, Saul? He looked at me. And he said, Daddy, let there be light. And all, all I wanted to do was just, I wanted to put my arms around him. And then I found myself being pulled away. He said it again. He said, let there be light, Daddy. And I, I, I sit here. And honest to God, I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Saul, so, you've gotten the best scientific explanation. And that hasn't satisfied you. And it, it hasn't brought you any comfort. I mean, would you consider consulting a different source? I mean, you've tried Dr. Patel and late night television. <sighs> Let me guess. Your pastor. What could it hurt? <laughs> oh, no, Katie. I don't know anything anymore. You know, if I could just, if I could just get some sleep. Ooh. Wow. Mm. <laughs> okay, so you'd seen the light now. Yeah, yeah. But well, he, he doesn't know what, he still doesn't know. He's still he's battling still with trying himself. To figure this, out. In the screen, we've done a lot of screenings across the country. This is one of the scenes that certainly hit a lot of men. Because whether they're with their wife or not with their wife and they have kids in their lives, they know that there's, I mean, I, I, a lot of my friends, I, I wish I didn't travel so much. There's so much time I'm away from yeah. my family and, and my, seeing my kids grow up. And I know people like this have gone through this. And, He's struggling with his own 
just not only that, but with his family, his wife, not only his own worldview and his view of, of God or not oh, yeah. God. He's struggling he's, with his he's, position he's, in the world. And this has Who hit a lot of this really? has had a lot of men and made it very personal for them. Mm -hmm. And it's been we just had a screening in Washington D.C. and it was interesting to see the people come out while she was doing the testimonials. I had all these people come up to me and talk about them when people were crying. People were saying thank you. A group of kids walked out that were in there. There were 15, 16 year olds, and one kid about 10 feet away from me, I heard him say that was the best movie I've ever seen. Wow. To get that from a teenager. Wow. And that's where we want to reach these kids because we're losing these kids. They're going into college and coming out the way they're coming out. So this movie touches a lot of people and, and touches a lot of hearts. Wow. Wow. Well, guys, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. For doing this and for putting your faith, finance, and careers on the line like this. I mean, it always takes a big part of us, I think, whenever we make film. I've, I've made five films and, and I've, I've been in those, that chair before. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's always a little bit heart-wrenching, but we want to do everything we can. Again, TBN family, let there be light, movie.com. Go there, find the theater that's nearest you, and do your best to go out and find. You can buy those tickets now. Yeah. Buy those tickets now. Let the theater know. It's a great indication that it's going to do well this weekend. Now, you know, Kevin's been part of the, the big God's Not Dead revolution. Let this be another revolution. Let's be part of that. Let there be light. That'll be really great. Kevin, Sam, any last words you guys want to share? I just want, I just want people to know that this, that this movie will give them hope. And that's really what it's all about. We, we want people to understand the, the joy that's inside, right? And the hope that we have. And that's what this movie does. And so I just... Really you know, there, there's a lot of places in here that it, this isn't a downer. This is a movie that's an uplifting movie. Yeah. And there, you will find a lot of places in there laugh as well. I'll get, I'd have a Kleenex nearby just in case because there's a few places <laughs> in there that's going to touch your heart and touch your soul. But it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a movie that is going gonna, is gonna to change a lot of people's minds and uh, change their opinions on maybe their right. worldview as well. Thank you guys so much. Let There Be Light this weekend.